Hello everybody. Before I get into this quick little video, I just want to give a great big shout out to Dennis Carter for being um, so very helpful, responding to my emails, and um, for posting all of the learning videos on there. And so again, thanks a lot Dennis. Hello there, welcome back. This is my newest acquisition. It's a liter LSW-333 sweep marker generator. As you can see, it has the old, um, oh, I forget the number because of course it's not a simple one. It's got a bunch of letters and a slash in it. <laughs> it's the same kind of connector that Heathkit was very fond of. And the same kind of connector, actually, that my ICO uses. So the first order of business on this is to replace these with the BNC connector. I've already powered it up, and so far all I've been able to test really are the bias supply voltages. And, of course, the switches here have been set in... These two have been positive, and this one is negative, I assume, because it goes up to seven, negative 75. But they've obviously been in this position for a million years because the switches are dirty. If I switch this one to plus, it does no longer works. And these two, if I switch them to minus, I have to really wiggle them to get them to work. And when I move it back to plus, I even have to wiggle it to get it to work. So, so a little bit of cleaning is in order. Um, buttons are all operational. I haven't, uh, you know, I have a box of cables from when I moved, and for the life of me, I cannot find one of my connectors like this, and I do have several, um, because I have uh, several pieces of heath kit equipment I never use, so, at any rate, I figured I'd swap those out, and then I can immediately test them, so, uh, anyway, that's the overview here, and let's take it apart. Well, I took the top off, and of course my first order of business here is having to get past this board, which would just kind of figure. Um, I am hoping that it just, uh, there seems to be some wires here, so I'm hoping it'll just tilt out and lift out of the way enough that I can get down in there. I'm also, well, I guess I'll find out. Also, interestingly, just for the heck of it, I just, I happen to notice that the power cord comes in here and this actually the board's unplugged so it's kind of modular so of course this came out a lot easier the first time anywho just thought I'd point that out I don't know why okay I'll be right back okay well going through the top was not the scenario <laughs> so the four connectors are down here in the bottom and I also notice that they're grounding against the chassis, which, of course, to be on the safe side, I ordered isolated connectors, so now I get to deal with that. Alright, so I was trying to kind of figure out when this might have been built, and I do not see any kind of date on this thing. <laughs> Anyway, very clean on the inside though, at least. All right, I will be back. Well, alrighty then. I went ahead and wired those in there. That was a bit of a pain in the butt, getting the old ones out. Took me a second to realize that this was made in Japan, so it was not going to be 9 16 it was 14 millimeters. <laughs> so, anyway, once that was done. So here we are, BNC connectors now on the front. Almost all of them are lined up anyway. I'm a little anal like that. So I went ahead and cleaned these switches uh, with some deoxit. So uh, I'm hoping those are okay. I'm going to have to get in here, obviously, and I'm assuming and clean everything else if I can get in there. Uh, I'm sure I can through the top, but I want to get this tested ASAP. So I'll be right back. Hello, welcome back. So I've got it hooked up. <clears throat> I don't have a, um, when I bought this it did not come with the modulator, demodulator, so I have to build them 
but fortunately the instruction manual does give you the information on that. So uh, what I just wanted to try is make sure that the uh, markers are working. Uh, I also had a little bit of a learning curve because I've got this semi-fancy digital scope that I regret buying because it's difficult to use. But after playing with it for a while, <laughs> I figured out the settings. Uh, anyway, so let's see, this is on. Alright, so what I've got here is I've got my 3975, it's working. And the uh, 4125, 4187, 4217. Um, the 4267 works. The 4275 is going to almost be on top of it. Oops. So. Okay, 44, 45, 47, 75, 47, 25, oh, and the 39.75, and then if I want to just add insult to injury here, I will turn on my scope, I mean my RF generator here, and I'm set between, uh, I'm set on the 32 to 150, but anyway, I'm at 40 now, so as you can see, I'm moving the freaking out my thing. <laughs> Moving the marker back and forth, so. I also managed to screw up the setting on this scope and I'm not getting the uh, frequencies, so that's why I was wanted to plug in the uh, RF generator to make sure that I was getting um, the scale starts at 39 here and uh, I wanted to see, make sure I'm on and it's it's pretty much on um, so we'll do the 4217 Ooh, didn't like that <laughs> so that's about right because I'm looking at the scale here and I know that the RF generator style is pretty much right on so <laughs> All sorts of freak out. Okay, so that's 47. So give or take, that's about 47.25 ish, maybe 35. But this equipment is, this uh, generator is old. I mean, the uh, yeah, the sweet marker generator is old, and uh, when I look in the uh, <coughs> instruction manual, I do believe it says plus or minus eight megahertz on the uh, on the frequency selector. So anyway, I just, again, I just want to make sure this worked because I'm going to probably end up needing it, and the last thing I need to do is be ready to work and come to find out that the generator doesn't work so anyway I just wanted to do a quick video on that and I will get back to the television oh and I'll order the parts to create the uh, two boxes for this so thanks for watching and I'll see you soon